The news business is rapidly changing, as we know. And so whether you're working in the news business, in some other form of communication, or just some other industry um, completely, keeping up with the profession that you're in is really important. Um, that's one of the reasons I have so many newsletters listed for you, and I certainly encourage you to um, subscribe to some newsletters that will just pop into your inbox on a daily or weekly basis and sort of keep you up to speed. One of the things that I often, um, the question I get often from alums who are in the job market again is they're asking me like, I want to get back into this field. Um, what do I need to be reading? What do I need to know? And so I just send a link to all of these newsletters because I think it's one way that you can sort of keep up, not only with, you know, you should keep up with current events, of course, and what's happening in the news, but this is about the business we work in. So what's happening um, as part of our profession. And we can be inundated. There are so many options. Um, one of the other um, ways to keep up is Trusting News is actually an organization that is helping newsrooms to share the news of their ethics, right? Like share how we do our business. And so Trusting News um, is often mentioned in some of the journalism newsletters. And they have some new initiatives going on. Um, one of the things they're doing is they're helping newsrooms create conversations with their audiences and helping journalists learn how to be more um, sort of transparent and explain how we do our business to our readers so they will understand. So sort of that's a thing going on in our industry, which is related to news, but it really is about our profession and how we can better do our jobs. Um, there's a report called The State of Journalism uh, 2019, where they surveyed 700 journalists. Now, the interesting thing about this is this is actually created by Muckrack, which is um, all about PR, right? So it's the PR industry, but recognizing that journalists need support and um, they work with journalists, so they surveyed journalists for this study. And one of the um, elements of the study was looking at which social media platforms are people most likely to be spending more time with in the coming year. Um, journalists need to know that. PR people need to know that too, of course, but journalists need to know that as we look at how we spread our precious time around. So um, Facebook, way down the list, right? People are spending less time with Facebook, but more time with Instagram. And of course, Facebook owns Instagram, so it's all the same to Facebook where you spend your time. But how should we be more effective in the use of our time? Um, one of the other things that was interesting is that journalists are consistently optimistic about the journalism industry. Um, and as you know, some of us are really passionate about the importance of journalism to um, our democracy. So you have skills, right? Journalists um, have skills. Journalism students learn skills, and they translate across many, many industries. Um, but I'm going to focus on the news business because that's where I live. The State of the News Media is an annual report that the Pew Research Center puts out, and we've looked at the Pew Research Center a little bit, but this is um, a, um, a survey and a study that um, all manner of media professionals turn to, and, and other parts of um, the business world as well, to sort of see what's happening in our business. It's relatively in-depth, but it's uh, in bite-sized chunks, so it covers everything from cable news and TV news um, to digital news, public broadcasting. So it's, a bit in, it's broken down into these little sort of bite-sized chunks. Um, you can look at just audio and podcasting if you want, or newspapers, or um, Hispanic and African American news media. So you can look at these different ways um, to see how people are consuming news. This is sort of an interesting um, element to look at. What are local news dynamics in your city? So you can go into this page of their report, type in the name of a city, perhaps someplace you're thinking about living or working, and then see how is um, the community interacting with news. So this is Austin. I did Austin. And you'll see that 69% of the residents in the Austin Round Rock area feel at least somewhat attached to their community. So this is residents feeling attached to the community. And then 74% actually follow um, local news very or somewhat closely. So that's a pretty high percentage of people in a community who are paying attention to local news. And then if we look at how people are consuming their news in the Austin area, um, the most um, popular way to consume news is a news website or app. So we're still looking at actual news outlets. So that's 
newspaper outlets, um, radio, um, TV outlets, digital first online outlets like the Texas Tribune, um, people are still going to those news outlets for the information. And then 31% specifically to TV, 14% to radio, 12% to social media, and 7% to print. So what's interesting about this is social media is, um, while it's growing, it's still just a fraction of how people get their news, but it sort of depends on like how people interpret this question because you may come to a news item by social media and then go to the news website. So we're still a pretty um, newsy town in Austin, right? We still care about news. Um, one of the other challenges we have is that um, journalists are a little slow to heed the information about their audiences sometimes. So here's a report from the Tau Center that says we just don't change um, that quickly. So we say that we want to pay attention to our audience metrics. So we say we want to know who is out there in our audience um, and what they want. But in reality, we haven't seen much change since the 1970s um, that journalists really are relying on their social circle, their peers, their sources, you know, the people that they do interviews with every day to sort of get a sense of who their audience is. And we really need to shift that. We need to shift um, in our subconscious sense to know who our readers are um, to really do some research. Um, and when we do that, we can make some substantive changes, right? Some, some changes that make sense for business because journalists want to be paid. It makes sense. So our businesses that own media outlets need to bring in money, even if it's a nonprofit. So one of the things um, interesting that happened um, a little bit ago, but is the Dallas Morning News took a look at um, converting their um, – digital subscription, right? So the idea is that if somebody consumes your information, will they become a subscriber? So you can get some free um, some, some free stories on a website, but will they actually start paying for this? So they found that there was an area where there was a lot of interest in coverage, and so how could they capitalize on that? If people want the information, how can we be the credible news source to provide it? So they looked at hyper-local sports coverage, which is really interesting. So is there an area wherever you are, where people have an interest in this hyper-local issue and are willing to pay to follow your coverage because you may be the only one providing that in-depth knowledge about an area. So for the Dallas Morning News, they started with covering SMU athletics, right? SMU, not a huge university, but passionate fans about their athletics. So they have a full-time reporter covering all things SMU athletics, from practices to games and issues going on in athletics. And then two full-time contract freelance writers, right? They're freelancers, but full-time who covered eight other colleges in the Dallas area. So that's three full-time people committed to just covering colleges, one who only covers SMU, but this has turned out to be um, a successful business model for the morning news. Uh, podcasts we know are a growing area, and so I've got this on the reading list, but looking at how how using podcasts has really changed the way we're doing journalism and how we're letting people in um, and a more conversational version of our story oftentimes, but also just giving them a new avenue to our content. We also know that mobile um, is just continuing to grow in the U.S. and around the world. So looking at how people are consuming our information. How are young adults likely to get their news? Well, mobile is a big um, contributor to how young adults get their news. So thinking about that, it's the most common way we access news. That means we need to think about what it looks like when we're creating um, visuals, when we're creating our story. What does that look like? Six in ten people get their news from mobile. Whether you're a media professional or a media consumer, or both, um, thinking about how we get credible information and the business side of that, the professional side of how we do our job, is really important.